Good morning, people of YouTube. Uh, today we are going to be brewing something a little different than usual, uh, something you don't see all that often, um, and that is a red IPA. So a West Coast red, red IPA, American Hoppy Amber Ale, goes under a number of um, categories, but uh, I'm gonna stick with calling it a red IPA. Um, so what we're going for is a very substantially hoppy beer that also has a lot of really strong caramel notes. Um, and is built up on a background of substantially more malt character than your standard American IPA. It is going to be red in color, um, and we're gonna hop it pretty heavily to kind of compete with that heavy malt. All right, this is our recipe here. Um, again, keep in mind we're going for about three and a half gallons into the fermenter, so we've got seven and a half pounds. We've got seven and a half pounds of pale two row, uh, just over half a pound of crystal 40, just over half a pound of Munich, um, just under half a pound of crystal 120. That's gonna give us that red color. Um, just under a quarter pound of carapils to kind of boost that head retention. Just under a quarter pound of amber malt from the UK to give another good color boost. And then a very interesting little addition here that I got from the book uh, Brewing Classic Styles. It is just under 0.1 pounds of chocolate malt. Um, so that is a you know 400 SRM malt, but it's not bitter. Um, so what this is gonna do is really give us that dark red that we're going for. Um, and just a tiny little bit of it. Um, so hopefully it doesn't make it too dark. I am kind of playing with fire here. Um, next up for hops, we've got uh, a bittering addition of 0.8 ounces of Horizon. As a high alpha uh, bittering hop, we have one ounce of Centennial and 0.7 ounces of Cascade going in at 10 minutes, and then we've got one ounce of Centennial and one ounce of Cascade going in uh, at zero minutes. So that should give us a total of 62 IBUs um, and a really, really powerful, um, good aroma addition there with the two ounces of um, medium alpha hops going in at the very end. We're going to ferment with US05 because that's an awesome yeast that does everything and I don't have to make a starter. So last but not least, we're going to mash everything for 90 minutes at 152 degrees, uh, which is what I'm about to go do now. So I will catch you then. All right, so our strike water has reached the appropriate temperature of 159 degrees. So now it's time to begin going in. All right, so I'm pretty sure we're clone free and time to take our pre-mash temperature. And yep, we are right on target at 152. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna let that sit for 90 minutes. All right, so we are done with our mash. It has been well over 90 minutes because I kind of forgot about the timer. So it's all right, no worries, just more conversion going on there. Uh, let's have the moment of truth of temperature. Match. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're about 149. So I lost three degrees. Yeah, not too bad.
first half edition, which is uh, 0.8 ounces of variety. Alright, so here we have our pre-boil OG, which is about 1.052. A little high compared to what I was shooting for at 1.046. Uh, but we'll see what happens. I mean, I'll probably just end up with a little bit stronger of a beer. Sorry about the traffic noise. Um, but at the end of the day, it's beer, right? So, we have fun with it. Alright, yeah, so here's the second half edition, um, which is... Oh god, what is it? Um, yeah, one ounce of Centennial and 0.7 ounces of Cascade, right? Yeah, okay. So, we screwed up. Uh, yeah, so I threw the, uh, the 10 minute hop edition in at 30 minutes. There is no 30 minute hop edition. There's a 10 minute hop edition. So, we're gonna have a much hoppier beer. Um, than I was going for. So that's definitely gonna be very different than the intended result. I'm a little mad about that. Uh, um, this is why you need to pay attention to your brew schedule. And um, yeah, mistakes happen, but uh, I hope this one didn't really kill the beer because I don't want it to be too bitter, but I just threw an ounce and a half of hops in there. So actually over an ounce and a half. Um, so, uh, I, I really hope that didn't kill it. Um, we're gonna find out. We're gonna ferment this thing down and do everything we normally do, but uh, I was really hoping this beer was gonna be good, and, and now I'm kinda thinking it might not be, so. Um, but, well, here we are. <laughs> All right, so after my little kinda uh, panicky moment there where I realized I dropped the wrong hop edition in way too early, um, Thought about it for a bit, you know, did a little uh, looking around on the internet, as always. Um, so I think what we're going to do to try and compensate for that is um, kind of play with the last hop edition a bit. So normally it would be a zero minute hop edition, which means that I'm just dumping the hops in um, as soon as the boil's done, turn off the burner, um, start chilling, that sort of thing. What I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to try to attempt something called a whirlpool. I've tried this once before and I've kind of been and moderately successful with it, but um, what that means is basically leaving that zero minute addition in there uh, at about 170 to 180 degrees um, for an extended period of time. What I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna try and kind of go overboard on that. Uh, we're gonna drop the last two ounces of hops that I have in there uh, at zero minutes, shut off the heat, cover the kettle, and just let it sit for like a half an hour. I wanna try and maximize the aroma to balance out this crazy bitterness we're gonna get and then hopefully that's enough to kind of round out the beer enough if I don't have a good aroma to accompany a serious level of bittering uh, it's gonna be a very unbalanced beer and that's why I was kind of panicking earlier um, that 30 minute hop edition kind of has a lot of bitterness and not very much flavor and zero aroma um, so Normally the 10 minute edition would be kind of more on the side of aroma. Um, so we're gonna lose some of that aroma. And that's what I'm trying to kind of bring back. Uh, so we'll go with that, see how it goes. Um, I will obviously let you know. So. Each. 
Okay, so we have our original gravity sample here. It's uh, it's not quite cooled down to uh, 60 degrees yet, but I'll do a little math um, because we're now in that region where it's only like plus or minus two gravity points. So our gravity reading is 1.060, um, which is uh, which is not bad. Um, if with a temperature correction, it's going to be 1.062. So. Um, yeah, within two gravity points of our intended original gravity, albeit a bit low. So, you know, gravity's not bad, um, but I am a little worried about the bitterness. I redid the calculations, um, assuming that I put those same hop additions in at 30 minutes like I accidentally did. And it's going to come out to 85 IBUs, uh, which is actually really, really, really hoppy. Um, so, I really, really hope that this doesn't destroy the beer. Um, but I tried to put as much into the aroma as possible. I still have the hop egg in there as I'm cooling down. So maybe just maybe we'll get some good flavor and uh, aroma additions to balance out the crazy bitterness. Um, but time will tell. So as far as the fermentation goes, this is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, just two weeks at about 65 degrees. Um, <laughs> that's it. So at least the fermentation isn't going to be pesky. Alright, so I've kind of been brewing up a storm over the last several weeks. Um, so I have, geez, including this one, I've got five beers going right now. I've got this one, the Red IPA. I've got um, a Belgian spiced quad that I made last weekend. Uh, I have a bourbon barrel aged kind of style stout uh, that I made the weekend before that. And in the fridge right now, I'm lagering a Czech Pilsner and an Oktoberfest. The reason why I've been brewing up a storm is because, um, basically, well, I'm moving. Uh, this apartment's not working out for reasons that I'm not going to get into. I'm moving up to New Hampshire. And obviously, um, moving a fermenter full of liquid is a lot harder than moving cases of bottles. So um, I'm going to do my best to get everything bottled and uh, stop brewing for a good period of time because logistics are hard. Um, but anyway, that's why I've been brewing up like crazy, and uh, hopefully the new place is good. So when you notice a new backdrop in the videos, then uh, you'll know that I moved. Um, I'll also probably talk about it, because that's what I do. But anyway, um, this is our final beer in this apartment. So a little sentimental, uh, ultra bitter beer. <laughs> so hopefully it works out. All right, so we have our final gravity in, um, and it's reading about... 1.011, uh, so that gives us about, I'd uh, say, 6.5% alcohol, which is not bad at all. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and bottle this, um, give it a normal level of carbonation, about 2.5, 2.75 volumes, um, and hopefully it'll be ready to drink in about two weeks. Here we have our final product. So, pretty standard ale fermentation at about two weeks, 68 degrees, um, and I cold crashed it for two days and bottled. Uh, real simple stuff, pretty straightforward, um, and it had good results, I think. Uh, we had a final gravity of 1.012, so that left us with about 6.6% ABV, which is pretty standard for this um, uh, style of beer. So without further ado, let's go ahead and pop this open. It should be nicely carbonated now, it has been about two weeks in the bottle, so hopefully we're good to go. Um, so let's see what happens. All right, so I, uh, I named this the middle ground because uh, that's essentially what it is. Uh, it is a nice middle ground between a dark beer and a light beer, middle ground between a hoppy beer and a non-hopped beer, and um, yeah, it's got a whole bunch of different kind of rounding characteristics to make a relatively balanced beer. So let's see how that 30 minute hop addition that I should not have done impacted the flavor and everything else. Alright, so as far as color goes, it's going to be a little hard to tell this on camera, um, but it is actually a nice ruby red. Um, so I think that comes from a very tiny amount of chocolate malt that I added, plus a little bit of that caramel 120. Um, I don't know if you can see this either because of the dark kind of color of the beer, but it is quite clear. Um, could probably clean itself up a bit more, but all in all, it's quite acceptable. A decent head retention, um, a nice kind of not exactly a white head, but you know, still a good looking head for this color of beer. Uh, so the next category, of course, is aroma. And, um, well, 
no real detectable hop aroma, unfortunately. Um, you get some some kind of fruity uh, hop aroma, but not really uh, any sort of classic, you know, cascade hop aroma, unfortunately. Um, and that is due to our putting that 10 minute hop addition in at 30 minutes um, and then not really doing any sort of other uh, serious work after that um, besides that one zero minute hop addition. So I think I did mention this earlier in the video, but the uh, extra hops at 30 minutes instead of 10 minutes changed the utilization, so therefore the IBUs increased to, from about 65 to 85. Uh, so we have a relatively high IBU beer here, um, but it is also quite a malty beer. So what I'm expecting in flavor is um, probably something along the lines of a very strong hop bite um, and probably decent hop flavor with a lot of malt uh, kind of to back it up. So hopefully it's not too bitter on one end or the other. We will find out momentarily. That's not bad at all. Hops are, uh, man, the hops are certainly there. <laughs> um, but not in a bad way. Sorry about the noise. There is a dude who rides his moped down the street uh, pretty much this time every single night. Um, and he goes like 30 miles an hour and traffic are all stuck behind him all the time and it's ridiculously loud. And he does this every single night. But, oh well, I'm moving, so whatever. But, anyway, <laughs> as far as flavor goes, there's a big slap in the face up front with the hops, um, but there's a lot of crunchy caramel in there. Crunchy is really the only way I can think to describe it because it's just, it's a, a lot of malt. You can kind of chew on it. Um, this has uh, definitely changed its flavor nicely since taking an earlier sample in about a week or so. And yeah, it's relatively drinkable. You know, the body's not too thin, not too thick. Um, it's, uh, it's right around where it needs to be, I think. I would definitely uh, hesitate on calling this a red IPA, though. I think it really classically needs a big boost of a hop aroma. Um, it needs a lot of hop nose at the end. If I had dry hopped this, I could probably solve that problem. I didn't really feel like doing that, nor did I have the time because I've been in the midst of moving, um, like preparing for moving. So, uh, so that's kind of difficult to do. Um, but I think if I were to brew this again, I would probably keep the exact same hop bill, um, follow that recipe properly. <laughs> Um, but I might actually add a dry hopping addition to this because I think it would be awesome if I had a really nice hop nose as I, you know, came in for a sip. So, anyway, not a bad beer. This will be, you know, just fine to drink. Pleasant, um, kind of balances out some of the other things I've got in bottles right now. So, anyway, um, if you do decide to brew this beer, please let me know uh, in the comments below if you have any questions, concerns, comments of any kind, as long as they are civil, are always welcome. Uh, feel free to please hit that subscribe button and like button as well. It really helps me out a lot, helps this channel grow a little bit. Um, and in the meantime, I will be sitting back and enjoying the rest of this. And uh, hope you guys all have a good evening and happy brewing to you. Cheers!